So there's been a long-running accusation that TikTok is a psyop by the communist Chinese government to secretly make the rest of the world stupid beyond compare. Well, it is with a heavy heart I regret to inform you those accusations have proven to be completely true. Our society has never been dumber. Welcome back everyone for another Stranger Things watch party. Eddie Munson has won over the fans everywhere. You can admire him, you can root for him, you can feel his panic when bad stuff happens. He is the ultimate lovable hero. He's so lovable, in fact, the fans just don't want him to die. Well, over on TikTok, this desire to keep Eddie alive has risen to epic proportions. There's a few different theories going around and I want to cover them in some order. In fairness, some of them are more likely than others. Let's take a look. Okay, so the first theory out there is that Eddie is actually number 10. Yes, the young boy Dr. Brenner was testing when the massacre at Hawkins' lab happened. The evidence is that Eddie was held back in school at least once, and he had a buzz cut. Uh, my hair was buzzed. Except that's not all. He also wears a wristwatch, you see, where his tattoo of number 10 would be. Obviously, if a guy wears a wristwatch in 1986, it must be to cover his tattoo from the secret evil government organization. There's also the argument that he wasn't surprised when they told him about Elle and her superpowers. Okay, as cool an idea as it would be that Eddie was actually the boy at the beginning of the season, it's just not the case. There's many reasons why. First off, arguments that he was wearing a watch don't really amount to anything. A lot of people wore watches back before cell phones were a thing. Plus, he even takes his watch off at one point. While we don't see his wrist here, that's because there was nothing there. Plus, if he did get a bunch of tattoos, he probably would have gotten one over his number. He would have changed it. Obviously, that was never a priority because he never had a tattoo of number 10. Now, Eddie mentions his hair was buzzed way back then. Well, yeah, the purpose is Eddie has changed as he grew up, and Chrissy doesn't recognize him. It's not an indication he was a subject in Brenner's lab. Oh, and the argument that there is a girl L with superpowers that doesn't surprise him? Well, of course. He just saw Chrissy got killed in the most supernatural way. And then it happened again to a basketball player. Eddie can believe this. Plus, if he did know L from back then, he probably would have reacted differently. If he ever had powers himself, he would have brought that up. Oh, and there's one more important point. It's kind of a big one. That is, number 10 died. Like, here he is dead. Dr. Brenner's mourning over him. Like, look at this. This is not a boy who's going to get up then sneak out of the lab without anyone knowing. So yes, number 10 died and Eddie is not number 10. Don't make it more complicated than it has to be. Okay, so now we have to get onto the really big theories. Eddie didn't die. Or maybe he did die, but he'll be back as a vampire. There's a lot going on with these Eddie coming back theories. Most of them revolve around the Dungeons & Dragons storyline of Vecna. So obviously the show is heavily inspired by Dungeons & Dragons. So much of the look and feel and obviously names comes right from it. The problem is people often reverse causality. That means generally the Duffer Brothers come up with their story and then find references from D&D to fill it out, to add the names and the mood. They aren't pulling the story straight from Dungeons & Dragons, then dropping it into the show. Anyway, the theory is about Cass. Now Cass is the top lieutenant to Vecna. He's also a vampire. Ultimately, he betrays Vecna and is the one who destroys him, or mostly destroys him. So the theory goes, Eddie didn't die from the bats. Or maybe he did die, but he will come back as a vampire. Since vampires are technically dead and part of the undead, the Duffer brothers could be telling the truth when they say Eddie's dead. Vecna will make Vampire Eddie his top lieutenant, only to be betrayed in the final moments. For a while it's horrible as Vampire Eddie serves Vecna and does terrible things, but eventually Eddie comes through and saves the day. He betrays Vecna and kills him. Look, I get it, it's a fun theory. It comes straight from Dungeons and Dragons and that has a lot of influence on the show. There's also some holes in the theory that people really need to accept. While it's not quite on the level of 10 actually being dead right there on the screen, they are still significant. First off comes the tendency to just pick and choose from the inspiration. That way you can craft the theory you want and not worry about the stuff that counterproves it. For example, Cass did betray Vecna and destroy him, but he only became a vampire after that. He wasn't a vampire at the time. 
So all the TikTokers are at the point where they're taking the different parts of the inspiration and then mixing it all up so it works out. You can't really claim all this Dungeons & Dragons lore is a direct source for the show, but then only the certain parts that fit your theory. Plus, there's another bigger problem with the whole thing. That is, Cass was a villain. Cass was never a good guy who became a vampire and then got caught up with Vecna. No, he was bad from the start. Chaotic evil was his alignment. And yeah, he betrayed Vecna, but it wasn't like Darth Vader betraying the Emperor. Cass didn't have some good in him that won out in the end. Cass was under the influence of his sword. He betrayed Vecna so he could usurp his power. Cass wanted to be the new, bigger, badder Vecna. He ultimately called himself Cass the Destroyer. So I get it. Most of the theories ultimately come from the simple fact that Eddie was such an unexpected, lovable character, people don't want him to go, and in fact would love to see him save the day. I made a whole video on why Eddie is so lovable. It's a good one and you should be sure to check it out. But the problem is Cass was a very bad man. A villain who wanted to be the super villain. He wanted the power for himself. He really has no connection to Eddie at all. There's another point to think about. Since season one, this show has been about Elle, Mike, and the boys. It's been about Hopper and Joyce, Nancy and Steve. They're the main characters. Do you really think the key to beating Vecna or the Mind Flare or whatever in the final season is gonna be a character they introduced in season four? Eddie may be cool in that he plays guitar, but he was never gonna be any more than that. If in Season 5, Eddie does all these great things, what does that leave for everyone else? You would be complaining about how after 5 seasons, the characters the show is actually about mostly became sidekicks. Now I'm going to be generous and I will say the entire vampire idea is interesting. Forget about Cass and all the other add-ons. Eddie was attacked by bats and killed by bats. Earlier Robin was going on about rabies and such when Steve was attacked by the bats. Obviously, it's not rabies, but it's not impossible to consider there could be something in these bats that could turn Eddie into some sort of half-human, half-bat, undead creature that is a vampire. Also, yes, a vampire was mentioned in the show by Max and Steve. Now we just need to sneak into his lair in the Upside Down and drive a stake through his heart. If he even has a heart. A stake? Is he like a vamp? Is he a vampire? It was a metaphor. Now, if Eddie does come back as some sort of undead vampire, it would probably be very different than the traditional style. It would fit into the Stranger Things universe. It's much the same way Elle is like the wizard from Dungeons and Dragons, but her powers are very different and unique from that. His diet would be different for sure. He wouldn't need to feast on human blood. He'll probably be connected to the hive mind, in which case he's not exactly free. A lot has been made about the puppet master and the like, this is the only spot where it would really make sense to come up. But this ultimately leads to another problem in this whole circumstances. If Eddie were to come back as a vampire, maybe as a servant for Vecna or as some ultimate warrior who will betray and destroy him, what happens next? The show is probably not going to end with a vampire Eddie re-entering society, especially since he is still believed to have murdered Chrissy. Eddie still has no future. Basically, Eddie would have to die all over again. That means Season 4 and Season 5 would end with Eddie's death. That's kind of repetitive and ultimately not a super cool way to end the show. We already got two death scenes for him in Season 4. The first where Eddie died and the second when Dustin told his uncle. Do you really think the series will end with another Eddie death scene? It's normal to be excited about the ideas and theories. They seem like they fit so, so well. But ultimately, it's better for the show if Eddie just died his hero death in Season 4. Then the main characters, the ones we've been with all along, move on and beat the big final boss in Season 5. It's okay, Eddie will always be in our hearts. But you should tell me what your favorite Eddie theory is down below. I want to know. If you want to see why Eddie is the lovable hero of Stranger Things, be sure to watch that video right there or linked in the comments. Otherwise, have a great day. I'll see you at the next watch party.